Well, welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. In this session, we're going to process AVHR data that's available for free from the U.S. Geological Survey. So the website is earthexplorer.usgs.gov. And once you register as a registered user, if you go to the Datasets tab and then AVHRR, we can basically check on AVHRR composite and then get AVHRR data that's been composited on a weekly basis or on an every two week basis. So we can do that for the entire state of Alaska. And not only will you get the NDVI data, you'll also get 14 bands worth of data. Okay, so we're interested in uh, one composite period and I did a search for June. And let's say we want this composite period, the 25th of June, 2013, and it's for the Alaska area. If we click on this button, we'll show the metadata. Okay, so this will have an entity of Alaska data from 2013, and it's composited a seven-day composite period. So it's going to be from July, the maximum NDVI for every pixel. And it's going to be in the Alaska Albers uh, Equal Area Projection, and it's a seven-day composite. There'll be 14 available bands. So if you go to the website, you can download this raster, and now what we'll do is go through the steps of processing this raster so it will be usable in ArcGIS. Okay, so when you download the data from USGS, the raster is a 14-band raster, and it will have an extension .img, which was produced by ancient software called LAS. But basically what it is is it's a band sequential binary byte image. So we're going to rename our extension to BSQ for band sequential, which ArcGIS would understand. So if I right mouse click and rename, we'll rename it to .BSQ. Okay, so in Alaska, this product has 1992 rows by 2512 columns. So if we pull up calculator, 1992 rows, so 1992 times 2512 columns, so 2512, that will give us the number of pixels that's in this raster times 14 bands, where each band is one byte. That will give us the number of bytes in this raster. So we can double check by right mouse clicking on this raster and going to properties. And you can see indeed it has that many bytes. So the size is correct according to our field calculation. So that's always a good idea to double check. Do we have the exact number of rows, columns, times bands? It should give us the number of bytes in that raster. OK, so now what we'll do is we'll create a header file that's a companion file describing the contents of this binary byte raster. So I've already done that for you, and I've done it from the documentation. So if we look at this header file, we have the number of columns, the number of rows. We've got 14 bands. Inside every pixel, it's a one byte value. So the number of bits is eight. It's a band sequential. So band one, then band two, then band three, all the way to band 14. The pixel size is one kilometer. And it's in the Alaska Albers coordinate system. So the upper left X map coordinate in the X is that value in meters, and the upper left Y map coordinate in the Y is that value in meters. So the first thing we'll do is we'll define the coordinate system for this raster in ArcMap using the define projection tool. Okay, you remember from the metadata, the coordinate system was the Alaska Albers coordinate system based on an ancient spheroid of Clark 1866. So if we go to projected coordinate systems, and then 
date systems, here's the 1927 Alaska Albers and meters. So that's for some reason USGS is using this ancient um, coordinate system, but that's basically what they've used for ABHRR. And then OK, and then OK. So now we've got our 14 band image, and it's in the Alaska Albers coordinate system in meters, and we're ready to start processing it. Okay, so from the documentation, band 14 is a cloud mass band, and that's basically from this algorithm cloud clearing of AVHR data. And that uses a series of tests. So if it's bright reflectance, cold temperature, etc., it's going to be cloud contaminated. So basically, band 14 values less than 100 are clear. And that's what we want is all those pixels where band 14 has a value of less than 100. So that's our next step is to process this raster, extract the NDVI that's from vegetated pixels, and we have a clear sky flag of values less than 100. Okay, so we'll add our cloud flag band, which is band 14. So if I double click on my BSQ raster, there's band 14. And we'll add that to our data frame. And then we'll rename this, whatever you want to rename it, I'll call it cloud flag. Okay, and if we look at the documentation, band 6 is the normalized difference vegetation index, so the maximum NDVI for every pixel during the seven day period. So we want to use band 6 and get all the pixels that have an NDVI above uh, 0.2. So band 6 is our NDVI band. And then we'll rename that to NDVI. Okay, so this has been scaled. So a value of 100 represents an NDVI of 0. A value of 200 represents an NDVI of 1.0. And so basically it's been scaled into integers from floating point, which went from negative 1.0 to positive 1.0. So the key thing to remember is if it's above 100, it's got an NDVI that's positive. So 100 is equivalent to an NDVI of 0, 0.0, 200 is equivalent to an NDVI of 1.0. So let's start by making a raster representing the clear sky pixels based on this cloud flag. So once again, if the value is less than 100, it represents a clear sky pixel. Okay, so we can use the con tool. So take this original raster and then the question is, is a pixel value less than 100? And if that question's true, we'll give all those pixels a value of 1, representing clear sky pixels. If it's false, it becomes no data. And then our output raster will be clearpixels.tiff in this folder. And then just OK. And then we'll symbolize that output raster, a unique value, and we'll give it some clear sky color. I'll give it a, blue, a green color. So here's all the clear sky pixels based on that cloud fly. So our next step is going to be give us all the pixels that have a value above 0.2 and their clear sky. So 0.2 in this integer scheme will be all the pixels that have an NDVI value above 120. So we'll use the raster calculator to extract those clear sky vegetated pixels. Okay, so using the raster calculator, if this is true, it returns a 1. If it's false, it returns a 0. If this question's true, it returns a 1. If it's false, it returns a 0. So basically, 1, 1 times the NDVI value will give us the clear sky NDVI for all those pixels that were flagged as clear sky and had an NDVI value above 120 which in the scale from negative 1.0 to positive 1.0 would be a 0 0.2 NDVI. And then just OK. OK, so the next step is we'll use the set null tool to turn all those pixels that have a value of 0. So either they were cloud contaminated or they had NDVI values that were very low. We'll set those to no data or null. So if this question is true, make the pixels no data. 
if the question is false, return the clear sky NDVI value. And then we'll output that to a new raster called clear NDVI int no data dot tiff, and then just OK. OK, so we'd like to keep our NDVI as integer, so we have a raster attribute table associated with our NDVI. So what we'll do is we'll subtract this raster the value of 100, and that way we'll have an NDVI value ranging from integer of 21, which would represent an NDVI of 0.21, up to an NDVI value of 85, which will represent the NDVI if it was floating point of 0.85. So we can use the minus tool to do that. Okay, so take every NDVI value which ranged from 121 to 185 and subtract the value 100. And then I output it to a new raster I called NDVI June 25th to July 1, 2013 and then just OK. And then we could symbolize our output using this color ramp and a two standard deviation stretch and our no data will symbolize as gray. And then OK. So there is our NDVI, maximum NDVI for every pixel from June 25th to July 1, 2013. The other thing we want to do is look at the radiant temperature from band number four. So we'll add band number four. This is the radiant temperature, so we'll rename it. So it's the temperature, but it's been scaled, so the temperature would be in 8-bit, 1-byte integer. So the original radiant temperature was in degrees Kelvin, and we could unscale it to get it back to degrees Kelvin by taking the pixel value divided by 2 and adding a constant of 202.5 and then just OK in the raster calculator. So that gives us the radiant temperature in degrees Kelvin ranging from 202.5 to 320.5. And if you remember from physics, zero centigrade is 273 degrees Kelvin. So it's a reasonable range of values. So now what we want is the radiant temperature in degrees centigrade for the clear sky pixels. So we'll use the raster calculator to create that raster of temperature degrees Celsius. Okay, so the expression would be, is the pixel a clear sky pixel? And if that question is true, this will be a value of one. If the question's false, this will be a value of zero. So either a one or a zero times the pixel temperature in degrees Kelvin minus 273 to convert it to degrees Celsius, and then just OK. And then finally, use the set null for those pixels that were cloud contaminated. Give them a value of no data. Otherwise, keep the radiant temperature in degrees C. So our final raster will be radiant temperature in degrees C underscore no data dot tiff, and then just OK. And we could color code our radiant temperature using a defined interval of one degree centigrade and then just OK and then we'll assign some color ramp to it. So here is the radiant temperature raster and we've got some fill pixels that made this um, area have super cold pixels that are just artificial. We won't worry about those. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got some quiz questions for you on the radiant temperature degrees C and the NDVI June 25th to July 1, 2013 rasters.